Okay, so let's look at working backwards. So we know we're trying to create um, something like this. Y equals A. This is my stretch. B is my base to the X, right? And we have a horizontal stretch and a possible vertical stretch. Not stretch, translation, correct? Okay, so let's look at the H and the K part first. So I'm going to kind of start filling stuff in here. Y equals box. Something goes in here. Something goes in here. Guys, I need you to stop talking, please. All right. So I'm going to look over here. This right here is your zero one. Does that make sense to you? That phrase? That's your zero one. So your zero one is usually always on that y-axis, correct? So if that y-axis has shifted, it has shifted over one, two, three, four. It's shifted over four. So this should be a four. Then it's also shifted, you can see your asymptote right here, your asymptote has shifted down one. So really, my new origin is right here. Does that make sense? It's like everything shifted over and down. Whatever you're looking at, I don't want you looking at it anymore. So I want to go down one. So instead of being plus one, it's going to be, I have no tolerance for cones right now. It's going to be down one. Okay? Questions on that part? How I found the shift to the left, I'm sorry, the shift to the right and the shift down. Yes. Because your asymptote is down one. Your, don't look at this. Your asymptote has shifted down one. Right? Yes, essence. I'm, I'm not there yet. I just want to make sure you guys understand these two shifts right here. This one and this one. Are we good? Okay. The K is your vertical shift, and that asymptote has dropped down one. It's normally at the x-axis, right? And it's shifted down one. Okay? Now, so normally when I put in zero for the exponent, whatever my base is, whenever I put zero in, I get one, right? Well, in this case, I don't get, if I was at one, it would be right here. But it's not at one, it's up one, two, three, four. But this should not be four, because four to zero is still one. So this must be four, the number on the outside. Does that make sense? Because anything to the power of zero is going to be one, and then one times four is four. So that's how I figured that one out. Now, since I know that this number is 4, now I have to consider what happens when my exponent is 1, or in this case, negative 1. Does that make sense? When I go over to this flip, now I'm not going to think of it as a negative, I'm just going to think of it as an exponent of 1. So when I have something to the power of 1, and it's multiplied by 4. Let's say this number was 1, which I know it can't be, right? If this was 1 to the 1, it'd be 1, and 1 times 4 is 4, correct? So when I go over 1, I should go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. But I don't, I go up, sorry, we're here. When I go over 1, I should go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that must, number must be 2. You see how I did that? The base is 2, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8. So if I go over 1, since this is the only thing I have, I should go, if this number was 1, and since if this number was 1, this number was 1, I would get 4, right? 
When I go over one, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know this has to be a two. Because two to the one is two times four is eight. Yes. Okay, so this number is two. But it's not two, it's one half. Why is it one half? Because it's descending, right? It's decay, right? Because we didn't go over one and up eight. We went over negative one and up eight. Does that make sense? Okay, we're gonna do another one. Here's this one. So again, trying to find all these pieces. But where I'm gonna start is I'm gonna start with my shift. So, here I am right here. This is my regular origin right here. Let's see how it shifts. Well, if these are my two reference points, this is my zero, one. So this must have shifted over one, two, three, four. To the left four, that makes this plus four. And then it shifted up one, two, three, because that's my asymptote. So this is a plus three. It is touching on negative four. You're looking at the point. Okay. All right. Now, there's a couple other things going on. If I reflected this over the x-axis, would it be growth or decay? It would be decay, right? So I know that this number is going to be a fraction. But I'm going to ignore that right now. I'm just going to pretend like it's growth and make sense of it. Also, it's pointing down, right? So this must be negative. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm gonna let's get to work here. So this is my origin. Normally when I'm at the origin, my first point's always zero one, right? But this is not zero one, but twice that much. So this number must be a two. Now I'm going to figure out the base by looking at my next point. If I go over one, right, if it was a base of two, I would go two, right? If it was a base of three, I would go three, correct? Well, let's look at this number. If I go over one, I go one, two, three, four, five, six. What would this number have to be to get a six? Three. My base is three. Exactly. Because it's decay, it's going to be one third. Okay? That makes sense of it? There's one on the quiz, and you guys can work together trying to do it. Okay, the last thing I want to do before I give it to you is I want to go over setting one of these guys up. So I think that's what Miss Liz really works with you guys with setting this, these up. Right? And then we're going to look at Desmos and we're going to look at how you can solve one. So on federal income tax returns, self-employed people can depreciate. So we have, right, you've got your, um, your starting point and then you have one plus or minus whatever your rate is to the end, I believe. So Self-employed people can depreciate the value of business, so we're going to be using the minus R. Suppose a computer valued at 2765 uh, 2, so it starts at 2765 and it depre depreciates at a rate of 30%. If I take 100% and I subtract 30%, I get 70%, right? 
So I'm going to use 0.70. Use a graphing calculator to determine the number of years it will take. C is years. The number of years it'll take for the value to drop to 350. So I want to know how long, how long it's going to take until it equals 350. So the way we do this is we compare these two functions. If I want to know where they're equal, well, let's set a constant line and then let's set a um, exponential line, not line, an exponential function and see where they are equal. So I'm going to put that in decimal. 2,765. I don't think you need to prove it yet if you had to. I'm going to look. I don't, I'm not sure. All right. So the first one was 350. And y equals 350. And then the second one is y equals I said I was going to remember it. 2,765? 2,765 times 0.70 times, which you can use any variable you want, and we're going to use x, just because we're using decimal. OK, so when I zoom out here, see that it's like way up there? Why is that 350? So I might as well adjust my y-axis. I don't need anything smaller than 0. And I'm going up to 350. So let's just go up to 400. Now you can see the line, right? Nate, you can see the line, right? OK. And then we're going out not very far. Correct? Look at, we're between 0 and it looks like, what's this number? 20? So I'm going to set my x-axis, my domain, to be negative 2 to 20. How's that sound? Good? Zoom out. How does this look? What happened? My, yeah, it's like completely negative three. It like reset itself. Oh, okay. Go back. Bottom. Where? This one. That's so weird. Really? Y equals? Y equals 350. And y equals 2,765 times 0 0.70 to the x. Now setting negative 0 to 400. And my y-axis is negative 1 to 20. That'll work. It's still resetting itself, which is really annoying. All right. Where is our point of intersection? I'm going to zoom in here. Better? So if 
5.795. So they meet at 5.795 and 350. What does that mean to me? After about six years, almost six years, the value is going to be 350. So that's what I really wanted to get to. I know that was a lot, right? But that's what I really, that's the modeling piece of this. This is why we're doing this. We're trying to figure out how much time it would take. So next, where we're going with this, is we're going to be able to use logarithms to be able to figure this out. Yes. No, yes, exactly. That's how you do it algebraically is with the log. So we don't, we don't replicate. No. You can only use graphing software right now. Or, like I saw Essence do, she um, did a table of values, right? And she put in one, and she got a number. And then she put in a two, and she got a number. And she put in a three, and she got a number because she knew she needed to get to 350. So she did it long way, right? I was pretty impressed. So she was really making, that's really making sense of it, right? Okay. So she had to put a lot of numbers in. She had to go to all the way to five. And then when she went to six, she figured that that was too big, so she knew it was something around five. Correct? Okay. Let me give you that quiz, and I get you guys working on this.